hello everyone and welcome to lawrence plays where it's time for the second half of this week's factorio with space exploration and crestorio 2 update so i'm going to talk about uh, what mark's been doing first and his big project for this week's stream was getting um, a, a new steel production and well steel and iron production system going so as i was talking about in the previous episode i've now got a steady supply well Actually, it is a fairly steady supply, it's just a bit slow, of um, a Vulcanite coming through. And that means this facility that he built, that Mark built up last week is now capable of, in theory, producing Pyroflux, because the Vulcanite goes up this belt over here and gets cooked or chemical planted uh, in these in, up here um, if, with, the, uh, with the sand, in, and that makes the Pyroflux, which then gets fed down here, down the pipes, yada, 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 into the, into the station down here. And so far, we've made a grand total of about, um, well, there's 26, actually, there's 26,000 in each of these tanks. So it looks like about 100,000. And that's probably the total that we've made so far. <clears throat> because there hasn't, as you've seen, there hasn't been an enormous amount of Vulcanite flowing through. Even more so, because half of the Vulcanite, actually probably three quarters of the Vulcanite, has been coming down this way, down going into these stations down here, where we now have a total of 5,400 of it, which is a bit pathetic if I'm being honest. We have, if we have a look in one of these one of these warehouses, we've made about yay much. Um, and now each each delivery cannon capsule that fires is one stack. So this means we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, and six, call that seven, 14, uh, 28. Uh, there's 28 delivery cannons worth of um, of Vulcanite in here. And if I want to fill up a train, that's going to need 160 of them. Um, so this is going to be a fairly slow process. I'm going to have to hope that we don't need Vulcanite in particularly particularly large quantities, at least for a little while. Um, and we shall, see, we shall see how that goes. Exactly how that goes, well, let's see how, what's the ratio like for turning it into Pyroflux. So every two two Vulcanite blocks turns into 20 Pyroflux, so it's multiplying it by 10, but then liquids tend to be bulkier anyway. Um, so then down here, I said I had 100,000 down here, so that's... Um, so it's about 10,000 of the... Uh, so it's 10,000 um, uh, Vulcanites, actually. So there's a decent amounts come from there. However, fortunately... I'm getting a little bit off, off the, what I was trying to say at the moment. Fortunately, for the last... Um, 50 hours or so we've been we've been doing core fragment processing over here and that also produces a bit of pyroflux and all of that has been going into this station here and that means we now have well, well the station's basically empty but this train is not basically full but has a decent amount in it so there's also a certain amount of pyroflux being generated down here now this looks like we need to tweak the uh, the settings on this tra on the stations around here to tell these st stations only to turn on when there's enough available and this doesn't seem to be programmed properly so there's a bit of an oops there that's going to need to be fixed but never mind um, I suspect that this station may well fill up before the one up here does the one that's been coming from the vulcanite however what well, but once all of that's been done it can be brought over to here and we now have we have a decent quantity of pyroflux in the in the tanks over here and that's being gradually pumped out here and this allows us to do the um and add an extra step into our processing so we've got the uh the pro turning turning the iron ore into processed iron here uh which is then passed out up here and we're then turning that into the molten iron by melting it in a uh, in in these industrial furnaces that's then being passed out up the pipe because it's a fluid and then it can go in and then we've got various we've got two different banks of these that are working in exactly the same way the one on the right is then combining it with coke that's brought up from this forestry these these greenhouses over here and the coal mines bring coal in here we're making coke and that's then making it into steel ingots um, and that's great because that that means this is a much more effective and simple recipe to be honest than making steel the making the um, iron plates and then turning those into steel i'll have a quick look at the numbers in a moment and flash them up on screen here but i think i'm pretty sure it's better and we get more steel out then over here, we're doing the same sort of thing with iron ingots, because if you remember from two weeks ago, I was saying that these iron ingots are required for the production science. So these are being all being passed off down here into, into stations where we've got... Um, we seem to have... Okay, so yes, we're making... And then we're down here, we've got another system that's making the... Is this making iron plates from... Oh, no, it's making iron plates from iron ingots. Uh, that's fair. Um, and steel plates from steel ingots here so we now have an alternative station this is uh, alternative set of stations rather that are providing steel ingots and steel and iron ingots and iron so we've got all four of those now available for whatever we might want to use them for and we've got like a couple of that <laughs> we've got 3.4 thousand of those we've got actually 200 thousand steel plates that's pretty good um it looks like we're prioritizing the uh, the steel plate making though over here on these on these splitters um and that makes sense because we have a lot of places around the factory that are already using steel plates but nowhere that's actually using the steel ingots yet so those are just building up in the station 
Similarly up here, um, oh yeah, we, yeah, we're doing the same sort of prioritization thing here, uh, where we now have an enormous quantity, 200, again, 204,000 of the um, of the iron plates available, and uh, 40, 40 or so thousand of the um, uh, of, of the uh, the iron ingots, which I think is probably reasonably sensible. It means we we we've probably yes, we've got easily enough for a train here, um, but but. But there's no point in there's no point in prioritizing this one when we're not actually using them yet. So the question is, we're thinking, what? How should we be transporting our metals around? And we're thinking that transporting them around in ingot form and then processing them when they get to wherever they're going is probably going to be sensible. So let's have a look at let's have a look at the uh, the maths of this. So if we take an iron ingot uh, like this, and one iron ingot turns into ten iron plates, that means a stack of iron ingots, fifty, will turn into five hundred iron plates, which is significantly more than a stack here. So you can get a lot more iron into a train if you transport it in ingot form. And beyond that, you can then also get a lot more iron on a belt because if you look at the, you're transporting the ingots around. Uh, the, one of these belts will transport fifteen items per second on a yellow belt. That's a hundred and fifty plates a second if you pro if you then chop them chop them up when they arrive whereas over here this is only this this one it's a red belt it's a faster belt but this is only transporting um 30 plates per second so we've got so we've got 150 versus 30 and this is even on a slower belt so transport yes yeah, so i think in the future we're going to start trying to transport the the uh, the metals around significantly more so in their in their ingot form and then where they're actually needed we'll then chop them up into the into the plates and that should allow us to save quite a lot of space. And this might help quite a lot with the sheer amount of steel we're transporting up into space. Because if we assume, is, is steel the same? Steel ingot, one of those turn, what, one of those, they stack up to 50 and they turn into 10, 10 steel plates again. So we've got the same same ratio, 1 to 10. And again, stack to 50, stack to 100. So if we start shipping these up instead of the plates, we'll be able to ship far more steel up per rocket or per delivery cannon or per whatever we're shipping the stuff around in. And it just makes things a lot more efficient. So yeah, over time we will start anything new that we put in. We'll start using it, iron in, in um, or, or steel in plate in, in ingot form. I think in order to make this just generally much much more efficient. Mark has also put in far bigger stations along here. Hopefully, presumably planning for the future when we're going to maybe have much much longer trains and be bringing, bring, and be transporting in, in stuff around in far higher quantities. Um, and this actually, yeah, this seems to be keeping up the uh, the supply of iron that's coming from the. Uh, Presumably, this is all coming from mines, though. We don't have a system yet to uh, provide to provide the um, the the iron supplies that are being produced from the core mining to be to, to allow it to be be brought up here. So at some point, I guess a future improvement is going to be to pull out these this this smeltery at least and. Uh, and the steel smeltery, wherever it is over here, get rid of these completely, and, uh, and instead of having, instead of using the, uh, instead of producing steel the old way, and iron the old way, we'll get rid of these, and then this will be just passed down straight down into here to a station down here, where it'll be taken away by a, um, by by a train to be taken up to the other, um, uh, the other mine, uh, no, the other the other smeltery area, I, I guess. Um, and it looks like we've now completely run out of iron ore down here. Whether that's because we've stopped trying to claim it down here, or whether it's just because the top, the northern stations are getting the, they're getting the priority, getting in as a priority. I'm not quite sure. But yes, this is now we are using still, we are still using the iron ore that's coming out of the, um, the the core processing, but we're using it in the slightly less efficient way. So some um, some tweaks and changes are going to be needed to make need to be made to all of this. But for now, it's a sort of you set you set up the new system over here. Which is over here, um, and in, in enormous quantities of it as well. It's one, two, three, three whole banks of it, all feeding out, feeding out to the same places. Um, oh, I see. It's being fed across the top here, and then down the middle. Uh, yeah, there's th three, three copies of this now, making enormous quantities of iron and steel, which is great because we've always been really, really short of it. And this system allows us to make it much more efficiently. I believe the reason that there's speed modules in all of these um, machines is because in the future. A plan, an upgrade plan, is to start putting beacons in around all of this, and then we'll be able to pull, fill these full of uh, full of productivity modules and put the speed modules in the beacons, and that will, in theory, allow us to carry on with this at about the same speed. I'm not quite sure. Maybe we'll need to use yellow and uh, blue belts. I don't know. We shall see how it goes. Um, but in theory, in general, it'll all work in more or less the same way, but faster and more and more productive productively. Sadly, you can't module, uh, you can't put productivity modules in the ingot making um, stage of the recipe, uh, which is why these are all fully speeded. But Celavi, I suppose, it's they're they're, they're mostly working. Um, yeah, you, why not? Why not use speed modules? It, say, it saves us some space at least, and um, yeah, why not? And power power is cheap, as we've discussed previously.
Mark has also set up a new coal mine down by Big Oil, apparently. So that may, that could be this one here that just appears to have evaporated. If that was, if that's the one he's just set up, that's disappeared very, very quickly. But yeah, I don't see any other mines in the area. There's a stone mine there that's almost exhausted. There's, yeah, we might need to have, I might need to have a bit of a think about um, resources on Norvis and how our mines are keeping up because that, that, that oh yeah, we we expanded out this way to get these big stone patches. So we're, we're, we've got a good amount. We've got 1.9 million stone there, so we're probably okay for now. Um, and there's another patch up here that we can expand to when we need it. So we're probably okay for stone at the moment. Um, iron, there's this big patch over here, so that seems to be okay. Copper, these ones are still holding on, and I think there's a few more copper patches around. But I think, so yeah, things seem to be more or less hanging together, kind of. Um, but Mark has also said that he's had some fun with Biters TM in order to attempt to liberate some more uh, coal patches, which I think is probably this one up here. So I, my, my guess is that he's planning to have a wall that goes probably across here. Um, and then claim this this coal patch at some point, and there'll be, need to be a wall over here as well, and and stuff like that. I mean, there's another 10 million up here, so again, a bit more fun with biters here, and then we could have the um, a, a wall across there, and clear those out, and then some more walls down here as well. I'm I, there. There are probably plans. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but we don't seem to have any crises yet for those sort of things. It does look like Mark has been worrying a bit about coal, though, so I think this might be something that needs to be needs to be dealt with. But he's, he seems to have it well in hand, so I'm I'm not particularly worried about it. Um, I don't see many other iron patches though. That maybe that should be something I'd be, I should get worried about. There's some copper there, um, but not very much in the way of additional iron patches. There's a couple of oh, okay. There's five million over here. That's not too bad. But again, that's where, that's outside the borders. That's going to mean more expansion in order to get that, which is which is a bit of a faff. So yeah, we'll we'll get that eventually. I'm sure. So uh, that brings us off. Uh, f that finishes off uh, what uh, Mark has been up to. Now let's have a bit of a talk about um, about Mike's problems. <coughs> so um, Mike has been planting some trees. Um, he's he's made some sort of weird uh, shape of, of, and symbols and things down here. I'm not quite sure what this is all about. But if you if you have any ideas, please um, please let me know in the comments or uh, see, see what you can do about it. Um, that's some some good handwriting going on there. So yes, Mike's main push in the last um, stream has been has been his module farm. So this is this is so far this this is this is this is massive. Uh, module okay, module city. It's not even a town. It's a, it's full on city at this point. Um, so at the moment he's got he's got speed modules being made on this side, hence the text. Um, product productivity modules being made on this side, and he's got. One, two, three, four, five, six ranks of these the, these machines here, and these are all making uh, productivity one modules. Now he ran into a bit of a problem here in that the system was pulling the glass through faster than these two be two belts could feed it in. But you know, he, uh, points for trying. So he ran out, running out of glass a bit. But the idea is when this when this system is is in full swing um, and hasn't run out of whatever it is that comes up these belts. Um, it will produce an enormous quantity of productivity one modules. Those then flow up this belt, but apparently, even despite all of this stuff, all of these inputs, it's still only it's still no more than one red belt. Those are then passed up here. They then get turned into productivity two modules. So again, we've got more processing of them up here, um, and then they're being passed up here. He is eventually going to make these into productivity three, but I believe that requires uh, vulcanite. So he's waiting for me to ship enough of it over that this, it's worth getting started on it. But the recipes for these things, they're they're mostly they're not too bad and most of the stuff they take in is stuff that we we have already on the train system uh, most of it is uh, so this one for example takes in electronic circuits i've got a factory we've got a town making those glass got a town making that it's part of the smeltery and electronic components now we we're making a few of those but not very many of them um, so i'll come back to that in a moment then the tier two ones green circuits got loads of those as i said red circuits those are being made Products prod ones being made just down south, and sulfur is being made in uh, in in big oil. So we've got all of the bits for that, and that can go into the into the tier two prod mods, and and then the tier three ones, as we say, that's two of the, the yeah. The, 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 there's the productivity twos are required, then the advanced circuits and processing units, and then uh, which are both of which are being made in Circuit City, and then uh, vulcanite blocks, which are being brought in from uh, Taikashuten. This is currently the uh, stumbling block here, and potentially why he hasn't finished. It's also possibly because we haven't done the research into it. Um, but eventually we'll have productivity module threes being made in very large quantities up here. So the interesting thing about this is they all take, I think, the same amount of time to build. So it's 16 seconds in a tier three, 16 seconds in a tier three, uh, no, oh no, 20, 12 seconds in a tier three, and 12 seconds in a tier three. Okay, so it's the same, same amount of time for tier one and tier two. But tier threes then take a little bit longer, so he'll he's probably going to put in the right number of machines. He'll be fine. Um, but you'll also notice that each module takes two of the previous tier of modules, and that's why he's building them up in such big quantities. Because in the future, 
we're going to want to start building tier 4, 5, 6 and so on. So we're going to be shipping huge quantities of the tier 3s up into space probably. Um, because we don't really... Well, it's either that or bring Vitamalange Extract and Machine Learning Data back down onto Norvis. Which I think is probably going to be a faff and not worth it. Um, so yeah, it's... It, it, I think we'll probably be doing this up in space, but this means we're going to need to ship enormous quantities of Productivity Module 2s, 3s, up there in order to build the later ones. So he's, that's why he's overbuilding it to quite the extent he is. On the other side, we've got something very similar uh, with speed modules. The recipes are slightly different, but other than that, it's, it's more or less the same. So again, this time, instead of... Um, uh, I can't even remember. I think glass, it was glass for the other one. We're using solid fuel here, but that's being made somewhere. So that's, again, just being brought in by train. <coughs> Then the tier 2s take the small electric motors. So the small electric motors and the electronic components are actually being made on site in this production facility. So we've got, yeah, we've got electronic components on one side, small motors on the other. They're being pumped out, but there seems to be a bit of a problem with the, one of the inputs here. Uh, it looks like we've run out of uh, this station's stuff, which is plastic. So we have a plastic problem at the moment. So a big oil is obviously yeah, being a little bit overwhelmed by the sheer amount of plastic and everything else that Mike has ripped out from there. But as you can see, we've got these massive long um, columns of um, of stations, each of which is pulling in a different resource. We've got iron, copper, silicon, should be plastic, uh, glass and circuits and so on all the way up there to, um, to, to, to get in all of the different things. They're then being brought down by all of these crazy long belts and um, I'm not sure why they're going. These ones are going up and then coming back down again. That seems a little bit weird. Um, there may be method in his madness. I have no idea what it is though, because he, he, uh, oh, it's probably it's probably to get a single bus. Yeah. He, oh, I remember. Yes, he was talking about this during the stream. It's so that the bus is running all the way from one end to the other. So this that's why this one, for example, the red circuit, run all the way down here and then back up again. It's so that you don't get to the point where the bus is split where it comes out of the station. So some of it going up, some of it going down, and then you don't know which side is going to need more. So rather than rather than having it split so both go up and both go down, he's decided to have it do this, which is a bit weird. But I can, I mean. It's prob it'll work. It just means there's a lot. It just means it's used a lot, a lot, a lot of belts, and there's a lot of resources cached on them. But it that that's a that's a latency rather than throughput issue. So again, not too much of an issue, I suppose. It's just a bit a bit crazy. Um, yeah. So he's, he's created this the sub bus down here for, for the uh, for, for all the modules, and the same on this side for these modules. That's working quite nicely. He's making the pit, uh, Speed one, uh, speed two, productivity one, productivity two, all, all, all making quite nicely. And oh yes, he's got cryonite uh, rods being dropped in here um, because eventually he's going to require those. I think it's, for, I think that's for speed three. So these will eventually be brought in, probably onto this belt here, uh, in order to be brought up and used for tier three uh, speed models. I also notice we seem to have a, tra a train jam here um, <clears throat> because we appear to have two trains. Ah, it's this one's run out of fuel just after leaving the station. Right, so there's some problems going on here. I think what's happened here is that Mark hasn't put a fueling station. A few, yeah, Mark has not put a fueling system in on the stations up here. So the iron ore trains have been going round and round and round and round and round and round and, round and eventually have run out of fuel and just stopped wherever. So, um, okay, that's that's a thing that's going to need to be fixed. We're going to need to uh, either turn some of this coal into processed fuel or make process or bring processed fuel in on a, to another station and then distribute it around all of the all of the trains here so that they don't run out of fuel in the future. <laughs> Oops, Mike, what else has happened? Mike, yes, Mike says he was the um, the recipient of Tristan Science that I covered in the last episode uh, where I talked about how it t apparently takes two delivery cannon capsules to the head to kill Mike because he's got quite a solid head. And he wound chat up into an absolute frenzy at various times during the stream, so... Um, Yes, that was uh, interesting. <laughs> Thank you for that, I suppose. Right, this brings us on to the um, the bad news part of the episode. So uh, there have been some more deaths today. Uh, one of those was Mike's due to the science, where he had uh, delivery cannon capsules dropped on his head. Um, so that was, I mean, that was... Uh, prob that's probably not going to happen again, because it's quite difficult to hit somebody with a delivery cannon unless they're standing very, very still. Um, and Mark has died an additional two times, both times to a cargo wagon. So he's been, presumably while he was setting up all of the railway systems around here, he managed to get clipped by trains a couple of times. So um, that that's um, that's unfortunate. So there's, there's uh, one of them was here. Um, I don't know where the other one was. But yes, he's been he's been ta taken out a couple of times by uh, um, by trains. Maybe the uh, maybe the death symbols sh sh shouldn't be um, shouldn't be skulls. They should be the the icon of whatever whatever killed them. So we could go in here and are there biter symbols in here? 
Uh, no. Okay, so the biter ones wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't work quite so well. But you know, we we could for the ones that have been caused by um, trained or delivery cannons, we could we could put symbols on here perhaps <laughs> if we felt like it. Uh, so that brings the totals up as you can see on screen to uh, to where Mike is well in the lead and Mark following in in a, in a somewhat distant second place. <laughs> so next time, what are we going to be doing next time? Well. I'm going to be. I think a lot of next time is going to be carrying on with the stuff I've been talking about so far today. So Mike is going to be trying to get the um, get the tier three modules happening in here and sort out all of the and and, and then do and then sort of go through and and bug fix the system. Um, Mark is presumably going to have to put in some sort of fueling system for the trains around here. And actually, this this system around here seems to be working pretty well. I don't think that, that seems to be okay. So it's already been, or it's already either been bug fixed, or Mark is so efficient that he that his uh, his builds don't actually require any bug fixing once they're done. Um, <laughs> Maybe that we could then consider having um, bringing materials in. Oh, a copper a copper smeltery with the new systems might be quite nice. Um, but although I might he hesitate a little bit to build that up until we've got um, until we've got the beacons up and running and we can make sure everything is then properly beaconed. Um, I think there is plenty of stuff that needs to be done, but I'm not quite sure what uh, what Mark's next plans are. I'm going to be carrying on with the with uh, improving everything out on Taishaka uh getting the um, Vulcanite flowing through at least twice as fast, because um, I reckon there's the amount that's coming out through here where we could be produce we could be producing this a lot faster than we're uh, using it up. In fact, let's have a look at the um, uh, what's this? This is Vulcanite core fragments, which is that one. If we look, if we compare the no that one, the, compare the rate it's being dug up to the rate it's being used. I don't care about that right now. Um, over the last hour, so we've been producing it at a steady rate of about 1.2 thousand per minute, and we've been using it up to about oh okay. So it looks like it's just it looks like we've um, we've, we've we've got it being blocked in places. Then either that or, either that or it's just all on the other side of the belt. And uh, I don't know. I, I I'm pretty sure. Actually, let's let's look further back. If we look 10 hours ago, are there any high, no? There aren't any higher spikes. So. I don't know. I'm, I, I will improve this and see whether that means more starts to flow through or whether we just then end up with a shortage of, um, of the core fragments coming through. Now, even if we do end up with a shortage of core fragments, it's still going to be worth doing because as we do more science, we will start to get better productivity bonuses on these, on these core mining drills, which means even though they are rather slow, they will be slightly less rather slow than they are at the moment. And that will in theory at least lead to a bit, bit more coming through i'm also probably going to need to go through and upgrade some belts around here because this 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 belt oh so there is a red here actually so that is that should be okay if i can get it running for full speed um so yeah we're going to get i'm going to put in more more um more processing more just more oomph to get all of this flowing a bit better and just gen and generally going much more happily so there's a yes definitely some expansion needed around here there's a bit of bug fixing needed as i've been pointing out as i was pointing out in the last video as i was fiddling with things um because this is this is me just sort of throwing everything together and then and then fixing and then we're reckoning on fixing it afterwards um oh yes mark does have a few th plans in the future so they're getting more coal as i touched on earlier uh, he wants to improve the capsules blueprint it needs some updates apparently um i hope that's not to turn everything into landfill because that isn't actually required we, we can actually we can just about rip through all of the um uh rare metals as fast as they're as fast as they're produced so i don't think we'll need i don't think we need to do that um coal liquefaction onto it would be quite useful though because that would mean that if we go out to a planet that doesn't have any oil on but does have quite a lot of coal or as if we eventually run out of the oil on this planet we can start to um we can, we can start to feed it with coal instead of oil instead instead of coal uh, instead of oil we feed it with coal instead of oil and he wants to do some rebuilding of the science on norvis i don't know if that's necessary but we'll, we'll see and Tristan wants to put in a, um, a, a, a some buffering for the for the cryonite before the cannon. So yeah, everyone's got some stuff they want to be getting on with. Um, we'll have lots more to talk about in the next uh, next week, and not lots more to work on. We're we're not going to run out of stuff to do for a very very long time. Don't worry. <laughs> so make sure you come along to the stream next Monday at 7:30 p.m. UK time. Um, we shall be building up everything as as usual and, uh, try, and trying to get things up and, and run, running more more effective more efficiently and, and bigger and larger and and interacting with chat as well and uh, winding them up as mike tends to <laughs> um we'll also yes i shall be streaming dyson sphere program on wednesday at uh, again at 7 30 we'll have um, videos coming out at the weekend as usual and um i think that's basically all the, all the sort of things we're doing on this channel uh, so yes lots of stuff to come along and check out please make sure you please do come, please do check it all out uh, and also have a look at, at the stream sponsor that's uh, treefoil.be if you go to treefoil.be and use the code lawrence plays then you will get uh, 20 percent off your first month so yeah that sounds like a great way of getting your getting your servers a bit a bit more cheaply uh, they also i, th I think they're all, they've also just done some upgrades to the Factorio server, so everything should work even better than it does at the moment. Alright, so, as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time. 
Bye-bye.